Okay, everyone, welcome back to the Mahoning and Shenango Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. No shortage of things to talk about on this Wednesday evening. We've got a little spring, we've got some winter, we've got some long-range intrigue. We even have a severe weather risk in parts of Ohio coming up on our Thursday. But uh, in the meantime, today was kind of a ho-hum day as expected. We did not have any sunshine today. We even had some pesky mist or drizzle for a time and not a big temperature range. 37 is where we bottomed out mid-morning. 41 was just actually after midnight. We got into the upper 30s to around 40 in most spots in the afternoon. A long way from the records today, including a uh, 48-hour period that uh, stands out in our record books around this time of the year. 1994, minus 18 with the uh, record low set on today's date, and then the coldest temperature on record for the Youngstown Warren Airport was set the next day at minus 22 on January 19th. 1994, 19 or uh, 29 years later, I should say. Hard to believe that makes me feel kind of old. Uh, 29 uh, years later, it is not nearly cold enough for any sort of wintry weather tonight. In fact, it is going to be rain that's tracking our way. This is going to play out kind of like it did Tuesday night into Wednesday with overnight rain and improving weather as we get into the daylight hours for. Tomorrow, severe weather component to the system. It's another dynamic spring-like system. This is the same system that brought heavy amounts of snow to Colorado. Kind of rare for the middle of winter. A lot of times the biggest snows in places like Denver occur in like October and April, not necessarily in the dead of winter. But this is more like a springtime system, certainly in a tornado watch still out this evening from Memphis on southward towards Shreveport, Louisiana. All right, uh, rainfall totals tonight, probably a little more... Uh, Impressive than Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Uh, we're talking about, or uh, Monday night into Tuesday morning, I should say. I'm a day ahead of myself. The previous system was Monday night into Tuesday morning. Today's Wednesday. Uh, the the uh, rainfall totals compared to that first system Monday night into Tuesday morning, a little more impressive. Three quarters of an inch or so worth of rain does seem pretty likely tonight into tomorrow morning with uh, the steadiest of the rain occurring overnight. All right, let's talk about this kind of rare severe weather risk across parts of the region on our... Uh, uh, Thursday, the uh, Storm Prediction Center uh, did upgrade their outlook today. Initially, they had an area of uh, low risk, one on a one to five scale, and they upgraded parts of uh, north central and western Ohio to a two on that one to five scale, slight risk of severe weather uh, tomorrow afternoon. This is, again, a spring-like system. The sun's going to come out. The atmosphere is going to destabilize. Now, it's not going to be as unstable as it is in May when it gets like this. We're not going to have dew points in the 60s or anything like that. But enough instability and certainly plenty of wind shear, turning of the wind direction with height, that uh, a severe weather risk is something we've got to pay attention to tomorrow, especially west of our local television market here in northeast Ohio. How rare is it to have a slight risk uh, on day two? Um, in January, uh, the red outline here is the current slight risk for day two. We actually had a day two slight risk earlier on this month in extreme southern Ohio. But other than that kind of extreme southern part of Ohio, just got a few counties in southern Ohio, these teal colors, I mean, it's been about a decade since we've had a day two slight risk of severe weather out for uh, the state of Ohio in the month of January. Included in this is a tornado risk because yeah, there's a lot of wind shear in the atmosphere uh, tomorrow. And so while we don't think a, uh, an isolated tornado is very likely at all, once you get over into far eastern Ohio and western PA, in a place like Sandusky, maybe Lima, heading down towards Mansfield, maybe as far south as Dayton, uh, there is an outline uh, here of a, a 2% risk of an isolated tornado in that green area. Again, pretty rare for this time of the year. I'll look at some model indices here uh, just real quickly. wanted to show you the significant tornado parameter. I'll back it up here. STP, significant tornado parameter, kind of a composite index of instability combined with wind shear, and you get a number, uh, and 0.2 units uh, is shown on the model here around Columbus uh, late in the afternoon tomorrow. I think you know that, that risk defined or outlined by the SPC is in about the right spot because this is where the wind shear combined with the instability will be maximized late tomorrow afternoon. Now, these numbers would not be very impressive if this were June, but in mid-January, we're going we're gonna to perk up when we see numbers like this. So, so the day starts out with a chilly rain, kind of miserable to start, but uh, despite how gloomy it will be at the start of the day, I think the sun is going to come out in the afternoon. It's going to, in fact, turn bright and sunny for a few hours tomorrow afternoon. Now as we get into mid to late afternoon, this is when we have that band of potentially low-topped thunderstorms tapping into the instability, 
present in the atmosphere and certainly tapping into the wind shear, the changing of the wind direction uh, and speed with height uh, that will be present across the western half of Ohio. And uh, any of these storms could, could mean some business, even if there's not much lightning and thunder with them. Uh, there might not be a tremendous amount of lightning with this activity in the western half of Ohio late in the afternoon, but they could be, you know, kind of mean for mid-January. It'll take a couple of hours for that activity to push in here. Now, this will be after sunset, uh, even though the sun's weak at this time of the year. It still matters that in western Ohio they will uh, uh, see these showers and storms after getting a fair amount of sunshine. For us, it'll have been dark for a couple of hours when this band pushes in. Still... Gusty showers, perhaps some thunder, very low end chance of severe weather with this for eastern Ohio and western PA. I do think the uh, risk is definitely higher off to the west. And then reality check for Friday. Flurries around, heavier snow shower, maybe here and there. Flurries will stick around then into Friday night and probably into at least the first half of the day on Saturday. Once we get past our little uh, spring fling coming up on Thursday, our attention is going to really turn towards the end of the weekend. Uh, we are in this window now um, where we can talk about trends. It's still too early for specifics and the nitty-gritty details and that sort of thing, but we're kind of in the zone where we can pick out trends in the model information. And the trends have definitely been uh, going up for precipitation Sunday. It may mostly fall in the form of snow. There may be some mixed precipitation. I do not think that the odds currently are favoring a big-ticket snow event, say six inches plus. Um, something that will be a real inconvenience. Um, but could there be enough snow on Sunday to cover things? I could see that definitely happening. I think temperatures will be marginal on Sunday. This snow may be falling during the daylight hours for a lot of Sunday with temperatures around 32, 33, even 34. If that's the case, then it's going to have a hard time sticking certainly on paved surfaces. But these are those are the kinds of details that we'll have a much better handle on over the next couple of days. So again, forecast trends. Heading in the upward direction for some snow and or mixed precipitation on Sunday. Also, keeping an eye on the middle of next week for more wintry weather intrigue. About a week from today, in fact. Next Wednesday, the models are cluing in on an area of low pressure coming through. And could this bring us snow? Yes. Could it bring us rain? Yes. Could it bring us something in between? Some sort of mix? Yes. All that stuff's on the table. But this looks like a pretty potent area of low pressure uh, advertised by the modeling a week in advance. So this system, of course, even farther down the line than Sunday, so we know even less about that middle of the week system. But that's kind of the next thing we'll be tracking uh, Sunday and then middle of next week. So finally, we're going to have some chances, at least, of having some typical mid-winter fun and games. It has been just very, very slow in the winter weather department so far this winter. It's been mud season for weeks now. And aside from that four days right around Christmas, this has been one of the most benign winters that I can remember. It kind of rivals 2015-2016, which was a super El Nino winter. It's pretty rare to have a winter like we're having right now in a La Nina. A lot of times we don't have severe winters in La Ninas, but typically we see much more in the way of winter weather than we have so far this year. We're heading into El Nino, it looks like, in uh, the second half of 2023, so that could play a, a role in the in the weather as we head towards the winter of 23 into 24. In the meantime, we're only halfway done with this winter. There's definitely uh, some intrigue coming our way over the next week, and we'll have you covered here on Weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks for watching. I'll see you right back here on Thursday.